Hello everyone, my name is Aryan Nof, and I will present a paper, Generalized Pseudo-Random Secret Sharing and Efficient Strength and Resilient Secure Computation. This is a joint work with Fabrice Ben Amarda, Elet Boy, Niv Gilboa, Shai Levy, and Yuvali Shai. So in this work, we consider the popular setting of multi-party computation with an honest majority. In this setting, we have n parties who wish to compute jointly some functionality over their private inputs without revealing anything but the output in the presence of t corrupted parties where n is larger than 2t. Now the reason this setting is so popular is because, because in this setting we are able to achieve highly efficient protocols that are information theoretic or only make a black box use of cheap symmetric crypto. Now within this setting, we can distinguish between two subsettings. The weak on majority setting, where n is exactly 2t plus 1, which is the minimal number of parties required to maintain honest majority, and the strong honest majority setting, where n is strictly larger than 2t plus 1. The main question that we ask in this work is what can we gain in terms of complete efficiency from allowing strong honest majority? Now this question may seem a bit odd at first glance because we are used to think that in cryptographic protocols there is a trade-off between security and efficiency. So if we reduce the security threshold, then we will be able to improve efficiency. However, this is not true for the honest majority setting. To see this, consider the task of evaluating an arithmetic circuit over secret shared inputs. If the secret sharing is linear, then the parties need only to interact to compute multiplication gates. The best semi-honest multiplication protocol to this date is the Damgan-Nielsen protocol, which has two rounds. In the first round, the parties send 2T messages to party P1 or any other designated party, and then party P1 sends back n minus t minus 1 messages to the other parties. So the communication cost is n plus t minus 1 sent elements per multiplication gate. Now, recent works have also closed the gap between semi honest and malicious security in the, in the honest majority setting. This means that we have the same communication cost also with malicious security both for the strong and the weak honest majority setting. Now assume that we want to work in the strong honest majority setting. So now we have two options. First, to run a protocol in the strong honest majority setting. But the second option is to let the parties share their inputs to a subset of two t plus one parties who will run the protocol for them in the weak honest majority setting. It is straightforward to see that, in, that the second option will result with less communication. And so it is not clear what can we gain from working in the strong honest majority setting. A different direction that has been considered in the strong honest majority setting to improve efficiency is to evaluate multiple gates together at the same cost of a single gate. This can be done using packed Shamir secret sharing where you store L secret in the same polynomial. So now the degree of the polynomials that are used during the computation is T plus L, which we denote by T, and the number of parties must be larger than 2D. Now, when evaluating SMD circuits, uh, where you have many copies of the same circuit in parallel, this, this gives an immediate improvement by a factor of L for both communication and computation, which is, of course, significant. However, when working over general circuits, previous works could only achieve asymptotic efficiency, but with high concrete cost for routing secrets between blocks when moving from one lane, layer of the circuit to the next layer of the circuit. So the question that we started with remains open. What can we gain in terms of concrete efficiency from working in the strong honest majority setting when evaluating general circuits? In this work, we present new techniques for the strong honest majority setting, improving communication, computational cost, storage, and latency. All of our techniques are based on pseudo-random secret sharing, PRSS, which allows secure and non-interactive generation of pseudo-random Shamir secret sharings from a set of replicated seeds that is distributed across the parties. Now, while this uh, method does not require any communication, the computational cost it grows very fast with the number of parties, and therefore it is only practical for small values of T. Nevertheless, it has many applications beyond the context of MPC, and therefore some of our techniques are of interest even beyond the context of secure multi-party computation. Our first contribution is a way to construct useful linear correlations using PRSS to support computation of non-SAMD circuits over pack secret sharing, which avoid the routing mechanism overhead from previous works completely. Our second technical contribution 
is a new general PRSS construction with reduced number of seeds and reduced computational cost when the polynomial, the polynomial degree D is higher than what is required by the corruption threshold T and the packing parameter L. By achieving this, we are able to extend the range for which the PRSS technique is applicable. Our third and last contribution is cheap strugglers resilience. In particular, we show that if the number of parties n is larger than what is required by the polynomial degree d, namely that n is larger than 2d plus 1, then we can allow the protocol to proceed even if not all messages have arrived in each round. While this is uh, straightforward to achieve in, with semi-honest security, this, this is much more challenging to achieve with malicious security because it requires dealing with a subtle attack due to Goyal et al, which we call the double dipping attack, which breaks the privacy of the computation. We present a solution for this attack that requires no additional cost while achieving struggler's resilience. Using our three technical contributions, we obtain the following two results. The first result is a PRSS scheme for sharing the grid D polynomials between n parties with security threshold T, where we make a reduction from the covering design problem and show that given a solution to that problem of size k, our PRSS scheme requires k times d plus 1 times n minus d divided by n PRF seeds per party, which improves upon the classical result of Kramer et al. when d is larger than t. And in the following table, we can see the number of seats per party in this work and in the work of Kramer et al. for two special cases, when t equals 1 and any number of parties, and when t equals 2 and any number of parties such that n is smaller than 3 times d plus 1. So as said before, this result has many applications even beyond the context of general MPC. For example, for threshold cryptography, as shown by Kramer et al., or for the task of secure aggregation, which is important for secure uh, federated learning, or even for the simple task of secure distributed storage, where a dealer wants to store a secret across multiple servers, and with PRSS, the dealer only needs to broadcast the offset between the actual secret and the secret that was generated using PRSS. Our second result is an MPC protocol with malicious security and struggler's resilience. In particular, we show that given a security threshold T, packing parameter L, and the number of parties N, which is equal or larger than 2T plus 2L minus 1, then there exists a protocol to compute any arithmetic circuit C over a finite field F with the S multiplication gates, which has the following properties. First, the protocol makes only black box use of any pseudo-random function. The protocol achieves malicious security against T corrupted parties, even if tau messages are lost in each epoch, where tau is n minus 2t plus 2l minus 1, and an epoch is defined as the two rounds where p1 sends a message to all the other parties and receives back a message from them. And the third property is that if the parties follow the protocol, then it terminates successfully even if tau messages chosen adaptively by the adversary are dropped in each epoch. And finally, the communication cost of the protocol is given in this equation. As can be seen, uh, the communication cost decreases as we increase the packing parameter L, and as we will see, we are able to beat the best previous protocols in this setting while achieving struggler's resilience. So let's go into our first contribution of generalized PRSS to support computation of non-SMD circuits over packed secret sharing. So let's first recall how the dumb Garnison multiplication protocol works. So we use the bucket notation to denote a secret sharing of X via polynomial of degree D. Now at the beginning of the protocol, the parties hold shares of the two inputs and also shares of a random R using a polynomial of degree D and also using a polynomial of degree 2D. First, the parties locally compute shares of X times Y minus R using a polynomial of degree 2D by multiplying their shares of the inputs and subtracting from it their shares of R using a polynomial of degree 2D, and then they send their shares to party P1, who can reconstruct X times Y minus R, and then share, share it back to the parties using a polynomial of degree D. Finally, the parties can locally compute their shares of the output by adding their shares of R using a polynomial of degree D. 
to generate the collet randomness, we can, we can use PRSS without any interaction. So how can we compute non-SEMD circuits using packed secret chain? So to illustrate our method, let's consider the following example. So let's assume that in each block we encode uh, two secrets, and the parties need to multiply a block with x1 and x2 with the block uh, that holds y1 and y2. So the output block should store in the first position x1 times y1, and in the second position x2 times y2. Now let's assume that after this multiplication operation, there are many addition gates, and then when the parties reach the next layer of multiplication gates, there is a block which in the first position should store a linear combination of Z1 and Z2. So our protocol will work as follows. If we give the parties shares of a random block that store a random R1 and R2, then the parties can perform the first step of the damgren instant protocol, which will result with party P1 holding Z1 plus R1 and Z2 plus R2. Now, instead of proceeding to the second step of the damgren instant protocol, we will first ask P1 to uh, locally compute all addition gates over the mass values, and only when it reaches the next layer of multiplication gates to secret share the masked blocks according to the structure of the circuit. This means that P1 will secret share a block where in the first position there is a linear combination of Z1 plus R1 and Z2 plus R2. Now, if you further give the parties also shares of a random block, where in the first position the, there, is, there is a linear combination, the same linear combination of R1 and R2, then the parties will be able to unmask the block that they received from party P1 and obtain the correct blocks that will enable them to proceed with the computation. So, so if we generalize uh, our example, what we obtain is the following. So the parties first locally multiply blocks of shared uh, values, mask the result and send it to P1, who can reconstruct the must outputs, and then locally compute addition gates over the must values. Then when party P1 reaches the next layers of multiplication gates, he can secret share block, block of masked inputs, which will be unmasked by the parties. And what we need to support this process is correlated randomness of the following form. Shares of a random block of L secrets uh, using a polynomial of degree 2D and shares of a random block using a polynomial of degree D for each secret satisfies the linear constraints that are induced by the structure of the circuit. And what we show in the paper that we can produce these correlations using PRSS therefore enabling computation over packed secret sharing without any extra overhead. So now let's move to our second contribution, which is new designs for reducing storage and computational costs of PRSS. So first, let's recall the classical PRSS construction of CDI. So first, for each subset of size T, we give the complement subset a seed, and then to generate the next pseudo-random Shamir secret sharing for each subset of size T, we define the next polynomial, where we give all the parties in the subset T the evaluation point zero, and an additional point is computed using the seed that is not known to the parties in T. So what we get here is a polynomial of degree T, because it is defined by T plus one points, and also a polynomial where each party can compute its evaluation point on this on the polynomial. And the final, the output share of each party PI is the sum of all its evaluation points iterating over all the subsets of size T. And what we get is a Shamir secret sharing of the sum of the secrets that are stored at the point zero in all the polynomials that we defined. So using the CDI construction uh, for generating a degree D polynomial requires storage of n choose t seeds and approximately n choose t times d minus t plus 1 PRF invocations, where t is the number of copy parties and d is equal or larger than t. This of course limits the practicality of the construction for only small number of parties. What we show it is that if d is strictly larger than t, then we can use this gap to achieve drastic improvements 
both for the storage and the amount of PRF invocations. The main technical tool for our construction is covering designs. This problem is defined as follows. So given integers n, m, and t, we say that a collection of sets S1 to SK is a NMT cover if it satisfies the following properties. So each SJ must be of size M and must be a subset of uh, the set 1 to N. And each set of one, each subset of 1 to N of size T must be covered by at least one SJ. So in the right side, we see an example of 6 to 1 cover because we have six items and the size of each set in the cover is two, and each single item is covered by at least one set. Now it's almost straightforward to see that covering designs are necessary to achieve general PRSS. In particular, if we have a T-secure PRSS solution for generating the greedy polynomials, then we can obtain an NDT cover. To see this, consider a solution for T-secure PRSS, which consists of K subsets, each set SJ includes parties who receive a seed RJ. Now each set must be of size n minus t in order to uh, generate a polynomial of degree t. And the t security property guarantees that each set of t parties must miss at least one seed, which means that there exists a set SJ such that the intersection between SJ and that subset is empty. Now in order to obtain an NDT cover, it suffices to simply take the complement subsets of S1 to SK. Now each, uh, the size of each uh, complement set is T, and we are guaranteed that each set of T parties is covered by at least one complement subset. So what we get is an NDT cover. However, the opposite direction is not true. And if we take an NDT cover, this does not imply a TCQ PRSS solution for generating the grid to polynomials. To see this, consider the following example. Here we have a 4 2 1 cover that consists of two sets, S1 and S2. So, in order to construct a PRSS solution, we would like to uh, define two polynomials that corresponds to the sets S1 and S2. The first polynomial corresponds to the set S1, and here we will give the parties in the set S1 the evaluation point 0, and an additional point will be computed using a seed that will be given to the parties that are not in S1. Similarly, the polynomial FS2 will be defined uh, using the set S2, namely the parties in the set S2 will be given the evaluation point 0, and the, an additional point will be computed using a seed that will be given to the parties that are not in S2. Then the final polynomial will be F1 plus F2, which is indeed a two degree polynomial because it is defined by three points. Now to see that this is not a TCQ solution, assume that P1 is the corrupted party. Now to learn the polynomial F, P1 only misses one piece of information, only K1. However, if F was a truly random two degree polynomial, P1 should have missed two points on the polynomials. Or in other words, it should have missed two pieces of information. This means that f is not pseudo-random, and therefore the construction is not t-secure. What we can prove, and we indeed prove in the paper, is that given an n d plus 1 t cover of size k, we can construct a t-secure PRSS solution for generating the greedy polynomials where the total number of seeds is k times d plus 1, and the total number of PRF calls is k times d plus 1 times n minus d. The main idea behind our construction is that we take each set sj in the cover and generate d plus 1 sets of size t from it, but each time, by each time removing one party from the set sj. And then we will use all the sets that we obtain, k times d plus 1 sets, to generate the PRSS solution. And the security argument says that given a, a set of corrupted parties of size t, there must be a set sj that covers it. But from this set sj, we generated d plus 1 sets, from which d plus 1 minus t, minus t sets does include t, which means that there will be d plus 1 minus t seeds that are unknown to the parties in t, 
which is exactly what we need in order to prove security. So in this table, we present a comparison between our construction and the CDI construction for multiple data points. So here, for different N, D, and T parameters, we have obtained the best N, D plus 1, T cover size. And using it, we computed uh, the number of seeds per party in our construction, while the number of seeds per party in the CDI construction is simply N minus 1, 2, T. As can be seen from this table, we get a dramatic improvement over CDI as the gap between D and T grows. In the paper, we further extend this result and show that given an N D plus 1 T cover, we can use it to construct a PRC solution for generating double Shamir packed sharings, which means that we can generate block of L random secrets that are shared using a polynomial of degree D and a polynomial of degree 2D, which is exactly what we need in order to evaluate SIMD circuits. In addition, given an N D plus 1 minus LT covers, we can use it to generate a PRSS solution for Shamir packed sharings with linear constraints, meaning that we can generate a non interactively block of random secrets, L random secrets that are shared using a polynomial of degree 2D, a block of L secrets that are shared using a polynomial of degree D, and each secret is a fixed linear combination of the secrets that were shared using a polynomial of degree 2D which, as we have seen uh, earlier in the talk, is exactly what we need in order to support evaluation of non-SAMD circuits. So now let's move to our third and last contribution, which is cheap straggler resilience. So consider an epoch which includes two rounds. First, P1 sends his second round messages in the dumb Nielsen protocol for the current layer of multiplication gates, and then P1 receives the first round messages in the dumb granation protocol for the next layer of multiplication gates. Since x times y minus r is shared using a polynomial of degree 2d, this means that p1 only needs 2d messages to arrive in order to reconstruct x times y minus r. And therefore, even if n minus 2d messages are dropped, the protocol can still proceed. In this case, we say that the protocol has n minus 2d Struggler resilience. In the paper, we give also a formal definition for struggler resilience, where we allow the adversary to choose adaptively the messages to drop in each epoch, and also stress that, secure, that security should hold not only in the presence of an adversary controlling the parties, but also if some messages are dropped in each epoch. Finally, it is worth noting that the uh, feasibility of struggler resilience follows from standard robust MPC protocols. But there it comes with an extra significant overhead. Here we are interested in struggler resilience MPC and not full robustness without any additional overhead. While struggler resilience is uh, straightforward to achieve with semi-order security, it is much more challenging to achieve with malicious security. And in particular, if we allow P1 to use only the first 2D messages that he receives, this will completely break the privacy of the protocol. This is due to an attack by Goyal et al., which we call the double dipping attack, and is carried out over two layers of the circuit. So assume we want to multiply x and y, and then multiply the result with z. So a malicious p1 can work as follows. So when multiplying x times y, party p1 will send the correct second round message to all the parties, except for one honest parties, say pn. Then, when multiplying x times y with z, party p1 can compute the message that pn should have sent him using the 2d messages that he first receives from the other parties. This is due to the fact that all the messages are point on a polynomial of degree 2d, and so p1 can compute all the other points on the polynomial using the point, the first 2d point he receives and its own point. Then, P1 can use the difference between the message that Pn should have sent and the message that Pn actually sent in order to compute Pn's share of Z, which of course is completely forbidden and breaks the privacy of the protocol. 
The attack is caused by the fact that all the masks lie on a polynomial of degree 2D, and therefore once P1 receives 2D shares, he can compute the n minus 2D shares of the remaining parties. Previous solutions to this attack include using a masking polynomial of degree n minus 1 or adding a consistency check between each two layers of the circuit. However, the first solution leaves no room for stragglers, while the second solution results in increasing the latency. We present a solution where we still can use only 2D messages, and therefore straggler resilience is maintained, and also without increasing the latency of the execution. In our solution, each party chooses its mask independently. And then the masking polynomial is determined by the first 2D messages P1 receives. This means in particular that all the messages sent by the other parties are now independent and cannot be predicted, which is what we need in order to prevent the double dipping attack. Now this raises several challenges when we want to unmask the shares in the next multiplication layer. And for this to succeed, we need two uh, additional things. First, we need P1 to send the set of 2D parties that were used to interpolate, meaning the set of 2D parties for which the messages arrived first. And second, we need to tweak a little bit the correlated randomness. And in the paper, we show that we can use our PRSS techniques in a black box way to support this without, of course, any additional communication. However, this requires increasing the amount of correlated randomness by a factor of n. So with our solution, we are able to compute the circuit with n minus 2D Stagler's resilience and with privacy. However, this is not enough, and in order to achieve malicious security, we also need to show how we can achieve correctness. In our protocol, we use distributed zero-knowledge proofs, due to Gnetal, to verify the correctness of all multiplications with sublinear communication in the size of the computed circuit and constant number of words. Now, using this tool in our uh, setting raises several challenges. For example, since we use fact secret sharing, now, all the secrets are stored in different positions of the blocks, and we need to show how we can perform in the verification protocol slot-friendly operations, meaning operations that are, over, that are over secrets that are stored in the same position of the block. Another uh, challenge is that the state may be partial for some parties who struggle in the circuit evaluation. To solve this, we will need to run the verification protocol several times, number of times that is bounded by the circuit's depth. Nevertheless, we show that the overall cost remains sublinear for all natural circuits. So finally, we examined the communication cost of our protocol for various parameters. So in this table, we can see for different number of co-opted parties, for different number of strugglers, and for different packing parameters, we present the number of parties computed as 2t plus 2l minus 1 plus tau, the total number of feed elements sent per multiplication gate in our protocol, and the ratio between the communication cost of our protocol and the communication cost of the best protocol where we leave no room for strangers and where we don't use packed secret sharing, which means that the number of parties is much smaller. As can be seen from the table, when we increase the packing parameter and the number of corruptions, we are able to beat the previous best protocol while still leaving room for struggles. So to summarize our contribution, our first contribution is PRSS for packed secret sharing, which allows us to reduce communication and computation when computing non-SMB circuits. Our second contribution is new design for PRSS, which allows us to reduce computation and storage. And the final co contribution is struggler resilience, which allows us to reduce the latency of the protocol. So with this, I will end my talk. Thank you very much for listening.